I am sharing through WebEx and I'm recording at the same time. So um, yeah, if you want to go ahead and log on to the WebEx, that'll that'll help too. So a couple of things I've updated. Um, not uh, not updated, but you know, made additions to. Um, nothing to the schedule. We're still on track. Um, actually, today is probably one of the last like full lectures I'll be giving. Um, a lot of the rest of this, I, I will I will touch on little short lectures, but it's more in uh, content stuff. So like um, we'll talk a little bit about storyboarding and what you're what you're aiming at for storyboarding. Um, probably on Monday or Tuesday, um, <clears throat> I may do a little bit of like one-off uh, lectures here and there if if I have consistent questions. Um, but today is. The last of my knowledge that I have to, to give to you, I'm empty after that. You have to work it out from there. Not really. Um, <clears throat> but this is a big one um, because this is, uh, this can be a very complicated process um, in terms of organization when you're making your character uh, for, for lip sync. Uh, but after you get it made, it's super easy to, um, to actually animate the lip sync. So I'm going to go through both processes today. Um, but I felt like redundancy is probably better than, um, than not enough information. So I've made a couple of changes to the links folder up here. So um, I actually need you all to go open that links folder right now, because there's two or three things we're going to look at here. <clears throat> So on this links folder, if you look here, I've put it, this whole section down here at the bottom, right? Um, there's these Toon Boom lip, lip sync videos, which is a couple of um, videos where this guy kind of explains how to set up your character for lip sync. Um, I found another YouTube video where he kind of goes through an, a similar version. So there's three videos up there that will walk you through setting up your character for animating lip sync. <clears throat> and one video, which is that second Toon Boom lip sync vid, um, which shows you a way of automatically generating lip sync. There's actually just a button. If you get everything set up correctly, there's a button you can click in Toon Boom that will automatically do all of your lip sync for you. <clears throat> um, Anybody have Siri? Yeah, or, or Hey Google, or whatever the other version of it is. Yeah, Gets it right about 25% of the time, right? I, like, I, Siri has tried to send people text messages that have embarrassingly incorrect things in it before. Um, <clears throat> it's going to work very closely to that, right? You're going to get a, a very uh, dull and not very imaginative version of it. Um, and the reason for that is because it's just listening to sound, and sounds can be confusing. So, you know, where, where the, the buh sound can sound very similar to the buh sound. Um, and said correctly, like, the Tennessee Vols can sound like the Tennessee Balls. Like, all, all of that is, is, it's going to confuse that, right? And those are two different mouth shapes. Um, <clears throat> So I will show you how to do that, but recognize once it does it, you still need to go in there and fix some stuff. Actually, I won't show you how to do it. I'm going to show you how to do the automated, or how to do the uh, manual version. The video will show you how to do the automated version if you want to take a stab at that. Um, so there's two videos for that. I also, right there below this, this Toon Boom vids right here. This is um, something that after digging around inside of the uh, Toon Boom Harmony website, I found some pretty decent uh, tutorial videos. Um, it's mainly for setup stuff. There's not a ton of actually animation stuff in there, but he, he goes over some, some very helpful tools, and so put that out there. That's a pretty reliable source for some, for some extra videos. If you have more questions as we, we go along through here. Um, <clears throat> but the reason I had you all go double click on this and open it is for this very last thing right here. This group list survey right here. So I'm going to actually give me a second. 
Let's copy this and look at it. Control C. Um, I want to paste this up here. This is what you. Um, this is what you get if um, you click on this link. I need everybody in class today to click on this link and fill it out before class is over. My plan is to have group list assignments for you by the end of the week, by Friday. Okay. Now, I realized just now that I, I filled this out to help me put people into the right groups, and I recognized I forgot to put something in here, <clears throat> which is some of you don't want to be in a group. right? Um, I am going to respect that and give you that option. <clears throat> um, I will not share any of this information with anybody, but let me look at this really quickly here um, to show you how to take advantage of that option if you want to. I need your first name, your last name, your preferred email. Again, I already have that. I just kind of put that in most forms so I can pull it out really quick. Um, and right here is group member preference. <clears throat> List the names of other people in the class you would like to be in a group with, if listing more than one person, list an order of preference. If none, write NA. This information will be kept confidential. If you write NA, that means you don't care who I put you in a group with. Um, those people, thank you, because that makes it way easier for me to just sort of slide people around. Like you, you're kind of the floaters in the room when I find somebody who wants to be in a group and, and there's nobody else to go in there with them. I can sort of put you in those groups. Um, if what your preference is, is to not be in a group at all, just write self, okay? Or write, uh, yeah, just self, me, something like that, so I know particularly who you are. What ends up happening is all this information goes into a spreadsheet. I use your answers to sort of organize that, and then I can very easily start grouping those. And so more than likely, the, the teams will be in groups of two or three, people. If I find a group that is like super like compatible, I may even go up to like four people, but I really find it works best at two or three. Um, so I ask you why, and I need, I need an answer for that. Um, because sometimes, um, more than anything, is because I want you to think of the answer to the question, right? Um, why do you want to be in a group with that person? Uh, is it because you've worked well with them in the past? Um, is it because um, you know, you're best friends and you do everything together? Each of those are two different reasons to be in a group and not particularly valid, right? Um, so below that, I have another group member preference. List the name of any other person, any other people in the class that you would not like to be in a group with. This is your polite way of letting me know, please don't put me in a group with that person. I don't get along with them. I don't want to make a stink about it. Just please don't put me in that group, okay? <clears throat> or don't put me in a group with that person. Um, this is handy if maybe you've been in a group with um, someone before and, um, and you know that you don't work well with them, you've butted heads with them, um, whatever. This allows me to put you in the right group um, and not have any hurt feelings about it, right? Again, I won't share any of this information with anybody. I do this in my office with the door closed. Like, nobody's going to see your answer to this. And again, I ask why. Like, why do you, you know, I just need a verification. Like, this isn't because, like, I don't like their haircut or something like that, you know. <clears throat> the last question I ask, um, and I ask this, this is kind of just borrowed from another survey. Um, I'll be honest, I don't think that it's really an issue here. Um, I said, would you be willing to be a helper with, uh, for someone in the class who is struggling, right? Um, I'll be honest, everybody in this class seems to be doing pretty well, I think. I, I mean, I think we're, we're getting some, some solid work out of everybody, um, hitting deadlines like we're a little floaty on, but I, I feel like everybody's kind of clicking enough to where there's not any outliers that we would call like them struggling, right? Um, so I don't think that this one's necessary, but I put this in there because um, <clears throat> If there is somebody in your class that is struggling, you actually usually get a lot out of helping them. Um, if, you, if, you, if you're sitting next to somebody in a future class and somebody's struggling next to you, 
lean over and help them out, explain, like if they have questions, try to show them the thing that you've already figured out. Um, one of the best ways to learn something is to teach it to somebody else um, because then you start to see where your weaknesses are and you answer those questions. I, I may think that I understand everything about the deformer tool until I try to show it to somebody else and something comes up where they ask a question that I don't know the answer to. And then I have to think about that. And then at the end of that interaction, I understand the tool much better. Right? So I actually find it really helpful um, when I have a super strong team, like a team that has like some really awesome people in it or people who are really good at this, um, to put somebody in there who's struggling because it, it challenges both. It, it makes the person who's struggling try a little harder to, to keep up with that team. And the people who are really good at it, it challenges them in a way that they maybe wouldn't be challenged just by doing the project. Right? Um, so fill this out. Um, I, this goes to a document that I look at. Um, I'm going to look at this document sometime tomorrow and organize it, either tomorrow night or tomorrow during the day. Um, and then I will have a result, uh, a, a group list result for you um, by Friday. Um, I'm assuming that most people will be here uh, Thursday and Friday, but just in case, I will probably email that group list out to everyone. Did everybody get my email about Jonathan Hounshaw? About his, if you didn't, I sent that to your preferred email you had listed on uh, the document I gave you at the beginning of the semester. So if you didn't check that email, um, if you did, but no, if you didn't check that email, and if it's still not there, let me know because I may have it in there wrong or something. But basically, it was the sign-up sheet for when he needed volunteers for the film festival. I had a couple of people asking questions about that. Um, there's your answer. Send him the times that you want to volunteer. That way, there's one master list that he knows who's going to be there. Um, the times for that are, I think, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I think. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, the Thursday and Friday class overlaps um, aren't that big of a deal. If you're wanting to do those, we can, we can work that out. Friday, though, is our final. This class uh, is two and a half or three and a half hours long. We're not going to spend three and a half hours on our final. We're pretty much just going to watch your animations, chat for a little while, and so you should be finished with that class, the last class, a little bit early and can still make it to the three to five um, time slot <clears throat> if you're interested in that. So send those to him if you're interested in it. Um, you're welcome to copy me on it too. But what's going to happen is he will have a similar list once you get to the, the film festival. You sign that on Sunday or Monday. I will email him and say, hey, who was on that list? He will send me back the names of the people who showed up and I'll give you the extra credit. Then, okay? So that's, that's the way that... Um, will work that. I'm, I'm really like hopeful some people take advantage of that. I may even head down there on Friday as well afterwards just to kind of help out a little bit. Um, it's a lot of fun though. I volunteered before and it's all the free popcorn you can eat. Um, <laughs> so there's actually some really cool, I was a judge for it a couple of years, for a couple of different years and um, there's some really neat animations. Like there really are some like, fun stuff and then there's some stuff that you're like, I don't know what that meant or what that was, but it was 17 minutes of flashing colors, and that's interesting. Um, okay, so hopefully you're all filling out that form. Um, please don't make me beg you to do that um, over the next 24 hours. Um, I'll be checking it at uh, um, Thursday. If the names are not in there, um, I will consider that as you volunteering to be in whatever group I want to put you in. Right? Um, Okay, so from those videos that I post on there, or that's in that list, um, there's a couple of different things I extracted from them I wanted to share with you. There are these JPEGs that are in here. So we got this, we got this, and we got, what can I go to the next one? This mouth chart, this, right? Um, we're gonna be looking at these as I go today, or as I go along today. Um, but this is how we will set up our mouths and tomb mode. Um, I'm probably going to use the other image just because there's a couple of extra shapes in there I like. Um, but 
what I need you to kind of recognize the reason we're doing this is because your mouth, everybody's mouth, <clears throat> goes into different formations um, depending on what sound you're trying to make. Okay? That's why a ventriloquist is impressive. Right? It's because it's really hard to say um, moon without putting your lips together for the M, right? And without sort of puckering your lips for the O, right? And if you don't believe it, you're welcome to try it. Try saying moon without moving your mouth. It's, it's a challenge, right? Um, <clears throat> and so the reason we can recognize um, those sounds is partially related to what we see the face doing, right? There are, there's actually a lot of psychological um, studies that show um, like ways that you can trick this, right? <clears throat> like if you show someone a video of somebody saying, I think it's ba, um, like B-A, <clears throat> and you um, show a video of them saying um, the, V-A, um, they can't tell a difference. And it's not because those sounds are exactly the same, it's because what you see overrides what you hear. Um, so it's very important that we get this correct. Right? What you're going to see when you study lip sync, or when you study the way um, our mouths move when we talk, is that um, are, are two or three different things. There's, there's two systems that we use to analyze this. One is called phonemes, or phonemes, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And basically that means phonetically, what shape does your mouth take for that sound, right? Um, it's like, what sound shape? Phoneme is pretty much sound shape. Um, and so you'll notice in here, like this, this is, this is compiling a, a portion of those phonemes, right? Um, the BMP or BPMs, those always start with your mouth closed, right? Book. Um, baseball, um, mouse, right? To make that sound, you have to put your lips together. If you don't believe me, try saying mouse without letting your lips touch. It just comes out with, just comes out mouse or something like that, like you can't do it. So there's a reason that that has to happen. It's because part of that sound is dependent on you building up air or noise in your mouth and releasing it, right? Um, uh, let's try book, right? If you listen, that's b and there's like a b like you, you're like like building up your breath and letting it pop, right? The P is really noticeable for this, like you can hear it in pop, right? That noise, um, and that's really you just building air up in your mouth and releasing it. That's part of what makes that noise. Um, some of the other sounds are dependent on other parts of your mouth. So this, um, this shape for S, D, T, C, K, N, and E, um, that's mainly consonants and then the long E sound, um, usually means your teeth are together, or right? So something I'll point out with both of these is that um, that sound, both of those sounds, um, have a narrow and a wide version of it, right? Um, snake versus um, soup. Right? You'll notice the S I make for soup looks more like a pucker, right? Soup. And that's because my brain's smart and it knows that there's an ooh coming after that and it's prepping for that, right? I can say soup and do it with the wide S. It's just really a little harder, right? And so, um, <clears throat> And so then, yeah, depending on the list you want to make or the fidelity of the animation, you may want to make a slightly narrower version. Um, but all of these have, um, you know, sort of variations. There's also a different way that you would make the B sound if you were angry versus if you were happy, right? Like your mouth is going to take on a slightly different shape. And that's actually why this list exists like this. The H, A, H, B, H, C, H, D. Um, that H stands for happy. Right? If we wanted a sad or an angry version, we would make another version of the BMPs where it's that shape. What we're doing, and this isn't for the whole head, this is just for the mouth shape, just seeing it in context on the head. 
Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to switch in and out of which mouth we need um, in our library as we animate. So continuing with the, um, uh, the, the different shapes, um, there's a couple of variations of your mouth where you need your mouth open. Um, recognize that your jaw plays a part in that. If your character's head has a very noticeable jaw and they open their mouth wide for the ah sound, but their chin stays in the same place, it's not going to look right. Um, so like if you have a little chin line in there or whatever, you're going to have to animate that down a little bit too to make it look like the character's jaw is opening. Um, the OR and the O shape here, those are the different, um, the O here, that's also like the W shape sometimes, like where or, yes? What if your character is like Optimus Prime, who doesn't have a mouth? <laughs> you know, but like it pops up and down every time you talk. <laughs> <laughs> you knew we were doing a lip sync animation. <laughs> um, well, so I think that. <laughs> Design a different character. <laughs> Well, no, that's, and I think that's reasonable. Uh, I mean, because you're going to run into stuff like that. Um, actually, one of the um, one of the things I was, I was talking about that uh, animation freelance uh, job the other day. Uh, one of the characters in that has a sideways mouth, like it's like a, a weird like. Um, um, but it's like how does that how does that make these sounds right? And and you kind of have to figure that out. It's actually an extra challenge for yourself, like. The, the sort of the cheap way of doing it with the Optimus Prime mouth is just to kind of bob it up and down and open it a little bit and be like, oh, just change it. You can do that. It's not going to be as convincing as if you came up with what, what would it look like for Optimus Prime to make the ooh shape. Do you make that whole thing narrower? Do you round it in the corners? Um, so it's a little bit more of a challenging um, uh, endeavor then. Um, one of the things you can do, I, I know you, you kind of see this uh, with uh, Bender a little bit, is I think that they have like, is it, is it Bender? Who has like different like yes. lights for a mouth? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like a sound wave. Yeah. And so like they, they, they found like, oh, this is the ooh sound wave. And you can kind of dial that in and out. So you can also try something like that with uh, different better. scale lights. Yeah, I think Bender. Um, I will say like it's very, this is, I really like lip sync animation because it's very gratifying when it works. Like when you're dialing it in and you watch it and you go, ooh, that thing I just made looks like it's saying those words. And so I would say try to see what you can do in terms of design to make that mouth look like you still have a, a version of this. Um, so these last two are kind of uh, special cases. Oh, obviously the ooh, like that's where you're you're going into like this very narrow, um, like your your. It's usually the ooh, the like the W sound, or the um, you know some, something that's really um, like the U sound will often get this really narrow. Um, this O and R usually that means it's leading into it, right? Um, so you have to kind of narrow a little bit for both of those sounds. Um, there are times when you can, when you'll make the R sound with like the HC um, face up here, um, and we'll talk about this HA through HH thing in a minute. Um, so the last two I really want to talk about there is this this VF and this L because they're a little bit different. Those two are dependent on other parts of the mouth to make these sounds, right? So forever, right? It's got the F and the V. And you realize that when you make those sounds, you kind of bite your bottom lip, or you at least take your bottom lip and touch your top teeth with it, right? Um, and so it's good to, to draw a specific pose for that. The L shapes, um, uh, lizard, um, love, uh, whatever. You'll notice when you say one of those words, what does your tongue do? Because it touches the top of your mouth, right? Um, so just like the MBs and Ps, 
are stopping that air from coming forward, right? Like um, uh, pop, right? The L shape, you're using your tongue to kind of hold back some of that sound and let it um, pop forward, right? Like um, let, right? It's like let. And so some of the noise is made by your tongue flicking down. Um, different L sounds, your tongue does different things. Um, hello versus uh, help, right? If you notice help feels more like the back of your tongue touches the roof of your mouth. Hello feels like the tip of your tongue touches the roof of your mouth. Um, <clears throat> for the sake of 2D animation, usually we just have a drawing where you can see the tongue coming up. And so you can, it's really subtle in this one, but in like the top two up here where the tongue is on the, on the bottom of the mouth, um, in the bottom one, the, the tongue is kind of flicked up a little bit and touching the roof of the mouth. So this is a, um, this is sort of the simplest version of what we're going to need to create today. Usually after this, we, um, we'll make a couple of other extra face shapes if we think we might need them, right? Like if we need a sneer because somebody's like grossed out by something, or we need a, um, a terrified face, like the character gets scared, you would make a different mouth for that, right? <clears throat> so um, I want to look at those others. Why? There we go. So the other two are taken from one of the from the YouTube video. This is another guy's like variation of that. And what you'll see is he doesn't have it listed based off of um, phonemes. He has it listed based off of all of the different possible positions your mouth can get into, right? And so like five, your mouth is really wide, right? But um, not open very much. Six, it goes a little bit more narrow, but the jaw opens up more. Seven, more narrow, but the jaw opens up more, right? Um, this is not specifically based on this, but one of the other ways you analyze face um, or lip sync animation or just face acting is the, uh, the facial action coding system, FACS. Uh, this is actually something that a lot of people use um, in terms for uh, analyzing emotion. Um, if anybody ever watched, uh, was it Lie to Me or something like that? It was some show like that where this guy was like, could tell if people were lying. Um, he was actually using, for the most part, the facial action coding system. Um, and basically what that is is a catalog of all of the different possible face shapes your face can make. I think it's broken up into upper and lower. And what those, and basically it's just based off of what the muscles in your face are capable of, right? I'm not really capable of getting my bottom lip over my head. Um, so it's what is the facial muscles capable of and what does that usually mean psychologically, right? So for example, if I smile and my eyebrows are up, it's expected. Right? It's like, oh, I'm just waiting for you to give me that answer I'm waiting for. If I smile, my eyebrows are down, it's like um, malicious, right? It's like, and I, I actually don't think I have a very expressive face. Um, but we can, we can kind of play with that. Those, it's the same smile, you're just messing with the eyebrows to get different results there. So um, this is actually probably something close to what I'm going to do for um, my character, well, I think when I do it myself, when I'm, when I'm like actually just working on it myself, I would probably do something like this. For the sake of time in here, just so you don't have to watch me make a dozen different face shapes, we'll maybe go with this one, okay? And I'm only going to do sort of a neutral version of my character's face because both of my lines only require that. So that brings up the question of your audio. Has everybody gotten an audio track you want to work with? Okay. You're, again, you're welcome to work along. Um, I'm going to work with mine not having headphones in, so you can hear it and see as I work. Um, but I picked two different lines, and I want you to help me decide which one to use. Um, so both of these are from Superstore. Anybody watch that show? Yes. Oh, dude, it's so funny. Um, it's got, uh, one of the characters is Glenn, but he's from, he's a, I don't remember his actual name, but he was one of the um, K-1 
Kids in the Hall uh, um, actors. And so I, these are my two lines. You all get to vote on which one uh, we work on. This one. Oh, well, as it turns out. Can't hear it. Was not a... Let's turn it up. Oh, well, as it turns out, Kyle was not a cannibal. He was only killing and eating people because he was high on marijuana. Oh, well, as it turns out, Kyle was not a cannibal. He was only killing and eating people because he was high on marijuana. Okay. And then the other option? Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Any preferences? I don't know. Dude. I have, I literally have a folder that has 30 different lines from this guy in there. Like, he's like, they're so funny. Anyway, um, yeah, how many of you are voting raccoon? How many of you are voting um, uh, the high on marijuana one? Yeah, both are good. I can't. This is like choosing a child. Choosing a child. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to go without a gun just because it's a little shorter. And, um, and I think a little more neutral. Like, he's not really, like, happy or, like, he's factual in this. Like, this is what he believes, right? Um, and so, um, so let's, let's go with that one just because it's a little shorter, and that would make this lecture a little shorter for you as well. So what I'm going to do is start with this character. Now, um, just kind of looking back in this, hindsight being what it is, um, I looked at the character and I think he works a little bit better with some outlines. So I went ahead and took some of the outlines from the sketch and brought them back um, so he has, uh, has some outline shapes. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and position him. Actually, before I position him, I'm gonna go ahead and make some of my mouth shapes. So, we've already kind of seen this, but I wanted to show you anyway. Um, if I go down here to mouth, right? We have the mouth layer. And if I go to library, you will see this drawing substitution, right? And this is what we're gonna use to do most of our animation. Um, we see from that drawing earlier, I need to kind of keep this open. Um, from this drawing earlier, we need at least these eight drawings, right? Currently, I have one drawing of the mouth, and it's kind of this one, right, number three, right? So what I need to do is make the others, and I want to make them pretty much in this order. Right? Um, I have a lot of different elements here, um, but I only have one exposure. I only have one option or one drawing to substitute. I only have one option. It's either this or nothing. Right? And so if I, on mouth, turn this down to nothing, then we get that. If I turn it up, I get mouth. Right? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go out here and click this button right here, which is going to duplicate our drawing. And do it again. So you'll see now we have two options. They're just the same two drawings. Right? I'll duplicate it again. And I'll duplicate it again. So for now, that's that's okay. And I'll go ahead and just delete the rest of this stuff just so we can see it a little bit better. And so now what I have is I still have the same drawings. I just have, or I still have a, a identical version of the same drawing. I just have four of them, right? And so when we look at this list, we kind of want to keep it in this order. One, for organizational purposes, but two, the, um, the way we automate the lip sync it makes it a little bit more helpful if we know what we're automating, right? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and do it in this order, which means my third drawing needs to be the one that I currently have. The other two, I need to tweak. 
Okay, so I'm just going to go through here and make this change. So I'll go ahead and leave it there. Um, actually, no, this is more like, I'm wrong, this is more like B, right? So we'll go ahead and leave that there for B. Um, which is number two. Right. Um, maybe for number one, um, I will make changes to that drawing. So I'm gonna go in here, select the mouth, I'll delete that line, delete this. That. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and there. So let's see how that looks between those two. Nah, I don't think I need that line. Um, the other thing I do need though is I need a little bit more definition on this edge that's a little too sharp. So I'll just use my mouse to get this. Um, just to get kind of a little bit more interesting drawing here. Um, again, this is the M, the B, and the P shape. So if you wanted to make this a little more neutral, you can so it's not curled up quite so much on the corners. Um, but the thing I want you to look at here, we haven't really talked about this with the pencil tool yet, but it's a really handy way of, of tweaking this. Right now, my line is very flat right here on the end, right? So if I go in here to my selection tool, there's this pencil editor line here. And what this is going to do, since I drew this with a pencil, since this is a pencil line, I can now kind of sharpen or um, edit this um, in, in whatever way I want, right? Um, I kind of want to round that just a little bit and then make it just a little more narrow on the end there. Let me widen that out. Go. And so that's going to be my A drawing now. Okay? So this is the MBP. Uh, you know what? The more I look at that, the more I feel like these are a little too low. So I'll do something like that. Drag that. Okay, so that's my that's my MVP A two. It goes to that. That's sort of the S shape. Um, three needs to be a little bit open, showing the top teeth and the tongue, and then four or D needs to be um, fully open. So I'm going to go ahead and do four next because. I can pretty much just edit for to get um, this one. All right, so if I go to four, go ahead and delete that. Go ahead and delete this. I want to make this entire thing just a little bit bigger. bigger and so I can kind of test this now as I go I like that I don't like the angle of it Just like this I don't want it to go too far low um, at any point we want to I can also use my uh, onion skinning here to, to sort of see the difference so if I want my top lip to stay kind of similar, I can do that. Just kind of. Um, I think the other things I want to do is sort of pull in my, uh, these lines that are on the top. This line, I just need to pull that in and make it not go out so far. Um, go. Again, with this one, I can Pencil editor down. Okay. 
So what you can be doing along this time too is just sort of working on your version of these drawings. Um, I'll keep talking through this, but it doesn't mean you sort of have to follow along step by step. Um, but when it's all said and done, I want to have um, all of those drawings I need to um, from that list. Shorter. Also, trying to make my lines as appealing as possible. There we go. So that's not bad. Turn off my onion skinning. I need some top teeth in here. Um, that also got a little wide there. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in some top teeth really quickly. Um, again, I'll do this with my pencil. Um, lines a little too thick. Tool properties. Um, is it this one? Oh, way wrong. That feels about right. Let's go ahead and set this to maybe four. Yeah, that feels better. So I can do straight line. Straight line. And then with my cutter tool, and go in here and trim off the parts I don't need. I'm not sure that's where I want that to be. Let's try that again. So I'm going to do pencil. I'm going to take his teeth a little lower. And then with that cutter tool, trim this stuff off. Um, something I like doing just to make sure it's sort of all together, select those two, this little band-aid here will merge those pencil lines. And so now I have something I can fill with, with white. Um, and just to give me a little bit of a, a tongue pre presence, something like this, and use that cutter tool again. Oop. Trim those off. There we go. Now let's look at our... I'm not going to fill this yet. I'm going to go ahead and get my other ones and then come back and fill them all together. Um, because I think I'm going to have to create a couple of new colors, maybe. Um, so that's number four. Right? Number five here, or no, I'm sorry, number three, um, needs to be a combination between um, two and four. Like in terms of size, it needs to be closer to four. Um, but in terms of, oh, well, it actually needs to be closer to four, but a little bit more closed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go ahead and go in here and delete all of this mouth. We don't really need that. Select all of the stuff from four. Control C, Control V. And then I'm going to just try reshaping this one a little bit to get what I need. Now, I don't really want to reshape the teeth um, and their location. So I'm just going to grab this stuff I do want to reshape. Let me move this stuff right here. Scale that down. Skew it a little bit. Maybe make it not quite so wide. And then I can very easily go in here and clean that up. Cutter. All right. So hopefully you're kind of getting where we're going with this, right? We have closed we have the sort of the s shape 
at these two open ones. And we're able to start seeing how these compare to each other. Right? So right now, when I look at my open mouth and compared to my slightly less open mouth, I realize I could probably make this bigger. It's another reason to not color it yet is because it can make changes a little easier. Um, I didn't want to use a cutter tool for that. So, uh, change all of this a little easier, maybe make it a little wider. So now we get that. Maybe rotate it just a little bit. See this in context. There we go. Um, keep in mind, there's all sorts of tools you can use for repositioning this stuff. We can also use this envelope tool will allow me to sort of pull that corner in a little bit if I wanted to. So I could do something like that. Um, or if I wanted to pull the corner of the mouth up a little bit, I could do that. So there's just a lot of ways we can manipulate this whole drawing. Let's try that. So turn that off again. Yeah. Sorry, I'm very picky. Let's try that. Now, I'm doing these as frames, but one of the things I want to point out is that at any time we can swap these frames out. They're still going to exist, right? Um, so let's say I, um, I deleted them all, right? off of my timeline, well, they still exist in my library, right? So, so when it comes time to do that replacement thing, I, like, still, number one is this, number, like, number two is this, and yeah, number three, number four, right? So we can swap out all of those very easily. Um, but it's a lot easier to kind of look at them when we're doing them all in one timeline. So a lot of these, the rest of these are actually going to go kind of quickly, um, like the L is really just the same thing as the AI, it's just got the tongue in a different place. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one really quick. Well, go ahead and make all of these. So I need four more. Let's go ahead and just one, two, three, four, hit F5, extend it to there. And then I'm going to do this um, duplicate drawing on each of those. And I'm doing this just so they'll be in the same number sequence as um, in that drawing we're looking at. So for number five, or for number, um, for this one, number eight, really I just need a different tongue. So I'm gonna draw that in there. Something that's very obvious, um, depending on how much you wanna push this, you can get really big with it. And then we'll just use the cutter tool to trim off the parts we don't need. Um, just a preference, a line in the bottom there so we can see what's going on. Um, so we got the OR, the U, and the F, uh, VF. So we can probably use our B um, for the VF shape and just sort of make that look like it's clenching. Right? So we'll get this. Uh, I think I have a feeling we're going to have to change ours a little bit. So, control C. There. Control B. Okay, so one of the things we'll have to do to change this, get rid of that center line. Um, I personally feel like this needs to change its location a little bit. I want it to be more like I'm going to go ahead and delete this fill, refill it later. So maybe a little bit more like this. And 
And I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more pencil lines in here just to kind of get the shape I want. Let's see what that looks like. Um, so I'm going to select these two, band-aid those together, same with these, and then I can manually go in here and make this do what I want it to do. And I usually have a tendency to push that lip up just a little bit as well. Something like that. That's like a little intense, isn't it? Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Okay, I'll do something like that. Uh, I still feel like there's something here missing. Less? And the final thing is I think that line is just too thick. There we go. That'll work. Um, so these last two are sort of the ooh shapes. These two here. So OR and OO. Um, 
I'm probably going to just do those two from scratch, I think. I may borrow the teeth. Let's just try it. So here, I'm going to turn on my light box so I can see before it. So, my ooh shape. Give me an idea. Um, I kind of want to feel like this. Let's try that. Close. I'm going to do a little bit of warping on this. I think I like it better like this. Just need to trim it a little bit though. Or at least make it shorter. I need a little tongue line in that. I do. I'm going to do that kind of in the back here. And then just go ahead and trim that. And then my last one, again, completely from scratch. Is this ooh shape. Um, which we can kind of do is like a, like a little sideways heart almost. So, let's get a pencil here. Maybe something like. Do it the other way. Let's keep that part. I think we'll keep it on them. those together um, and I am going to add just a little bit of a, a line underneath there kind of accentuate it just a little bit um, 
I also generally think of this shape as a little bit further forward. This and up a little bit. So, I have all these drawings, um, and I'm pretty much ready to start dialing those in to the audio. So, before I do this, uh, I'm going to go ahead and fill them in. I don't have to yet. I could actually do my entire lip sync with just the line work, and then I can go back and change the drawings. If later I'm like, I don't like that F shape, I need to make a different one. I can either duplicate that um, drawing um, and change it and dial that one in, or I can make a change to that F draw drawing and it will change it across the board. Um, but I wanted to show you this kind of quickly. Like, again, library. I have eight different mouths I can dial in for any given frame. Right? And so I can always add extra ones in here if I need them. Um, so what I'm going to do... I'm going to delete all of these drawings. Um, I'm going to go ahead and minimize my uh, rig here. And I'm going to go ahead and import my audio. So we picked the, um, the without a gun one. So control C, I'll go ahead and drop that in my character folder. Actually what I'll do is just copy this whole folder into frame. Nope, sorry. To character. Paste. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and save this as a new version. We'll say character rig 03. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and import in my audio so I can just see how long I need this to be. Import sound. Where are you at? Um, character sync audio without a gun open there it goes and so i can extend this out i'm at the end of my audio it appears to be about 160 frames right so that means i can go out here on my um my drawing peg go out to 160 hit F5, and my entire character should be visible out to that point now. That only works because I minimized it all the way down to the highest level. Um, otherwise, you have to do that one frame at a time. Now, again, if I hit play, you won't hear anything. Um, if I click this sound button, you'll hear it. I do not know how I would stop. So, um, if you want to hear it as you're scrubbing, though, we have to hit this little S here. So. Without a gun, I do not know how I would start to try and impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. So what we're going to do is, again, um, the mouth, I have a peg for that. If I need to move that around, I still can. Um, if I need to rotate it, I still can. But what we're going to be doing is on the mouth drawing, we're just going to go to the new sound and we're just going to change our drawing layer. So, sort of zoom in a little bit here where we can see it. So, I'm going to start in sort of a more neutral pose. So, maybe... Maybe this. Or, I don't know, I almost feel like I need a smaller version here. Uh, maybe we'll go ahead and start with closed again. So that's on my first frame, but he says, 
without a gun, right? Now, here's the thing that um, you need to be conscious of. You are animating the sound, not the letters, okay? So, for example, he says, um, he says, I think, without a gun, right? So, he is not saying without a gun, right? He is not like, you almost don't even hear the uh noise, right? He, it's almost like that runs right into it. So you need to listen to this phonetically. That's what you're animating. The reason for that is because accents round off um, different sounds, right? Um, if you talk to somebody with a, a, a southern accent, they may drop the G on um, words that end in I-N-G, right? Um, beginning, right? And so you don't want to put that G in there if it's not present in the sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and find those sounds, and I'm just going to dial in the audio I need. Right? So pretty much W and the T for sure. So I may even start with that W later, but let's go ahead and find that shape. It was right, right there. So maybe I would go ahead and start on the... So there's that TH sound, so I need the tongue in there. So, we watch what he's got so far. Without a gun? I... So, we can find more places to break this down, right? So, from here to this wide is a big change. So, maybe what I would do is somewhere in there, um, I, I would... Um, why is that putting... I don't need you to do that. Do those keyframes. Um, I would have it dial in somewhere that's like a an in between, right? Without a gun, I do not know. Without a Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that wreck. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that wreck. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop.
Would stop that wreck. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate so my Winnie the Pooh. I think I'm overanimating that last part. a little bit of a hitch here in my drawing too. So I'm going to go in here with this circle and just scoot it back a little bit. I feel like I'm scooting it forward too much. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from... seen something else in one of these like i get this top lip that kind of curls down there which looks good in a single drawing but all the rest of them look like this so i'm going to change this a little bit to fit some of the other drawings see how that top of that that lip or that end of the lip curls up and all the others it's down so i think i just need to change this to be a little bit more consistent and then in this case just get rid of this one just to get a little bit more of a consistent shape throughout So again, I'm just changing this drawing on the fly, and it's going to update it across the board. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to... There we go, that's working better.
See if something else I need to change. The TH shape, it's a little too tall, I think. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. So, hopefully you're all getting this. i just seeing what I'm doing. I'm just dialing it in from the sound, hitting play, seeing if it looks, looks right. Um, the two issues that most people have is that they're either putting in too many... Um, shapes or they're not putting in enough right and if you're not putting in enough that means your mouth is going to kind of pop um, on like it's going to feel like it's holding still for too long and then popping to the next shape um if you put too many of them it's going to flicker really fast and it's going to look like it's constantly moving um, i would try to make most of your shapes hold for about two frames occasionally you can have a one frame a piece in there, you'll see I have a few of those. In most of those cases, I was transitioning from a really wide shape to a really narrow shape, and I needed something kind of in between to soften that transition. Now, mine's still going to look a little poppy um, because I'm using this setup, right? Um, if you wanted to, if you want yours to look a little smoother. I think this setup gives you more options between the narrow and the wide. Obviously, this is just an example, but you'll see like this transition from five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, you can go across that in four consecutive frames and get a slow in and out transition. So, like I said, if I had, if I were doing this um, not just for an example, I would probably take the time to make all of these shapes, maybe even a few more. Um, and it's still not too late for that. Like, I just can't have them in the right order as it is right now. Now, I want to show you this really quickly. I, I'm going to, I'm probably going to finish animating this. I'll turn down my audio here in a minute so it's not driving you nuts. And you can get to work animating yours. But I wanted to show you um, one of the reasons we make them in the order we do. One of the reasons they sort of show you that in this chart and why they're naming them A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Right? Um, that's because if we go to, I think it's Animate Lip Sync, we can do some lip sync stuff here as well. I think that there's a way, oh crap, is it in this layer? Yeah, Lip Sync. 
So there's this um, auto lip sync detection. Um, yeah, auto lip sync detection. And what that's going to do is it's going to analyze all of the sounds that is in this audio clip and it's going to assign them to one of the shapes that you have it mapped to. And if we use this map lip sync, that A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or H, whatever, um, those are going to line up here. So we can do that by just pointing to the mouth and saying for A, I want one, which is my drawing there. B, two, three, four, five, six, uh, yeah, seven. For some reason that's not finding my T. Uh, we'll go ahead and do that as eight. Um, and hit OK. And you'll notice that when I did that, it just wiped out all of my lip sync tracks there, right? Um, let me undo that and go ahead and save it first because this is probably what I'm going to be working on. Save as a new version. Um, okay. So again, lip sync. Um, there we go. Okay. And then... I can hit right click, lip sync. Um, wait, did I do that right? I did not. I did it on drawing instead of mouth. Sorry. One, tab, two. Okay. okay. See, so it wipes it out. And then when I right click on here and I say auto lip sync detection. I may have to do it on the mouth layer. Hmm. I'm not sure why that's not working. Uh, let me make sure. I don't want to do drawing, I want to do mouth. Okay. There we go. So it automatically chopped up my mouth now, and if you watch it just when I hit play, this is what it's going to give me. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. So it's closer, or it's close, but there's just a lot of, like, you can tell it kind of bounces between the same three or four, because some of those really nuanced sounds it's missing. Right, so that gave me a good attempt Probably what I would do with that is go in and dial in the details to get it to, to work more um, appropriately. So um, what I just did there, that's what all of those videos I shared with you are going over to. Um, they go over it in a slightly different way. I, I think you usually get the best result when you manually create these, uh, when you manually dial in the sounds personally. Um, so that's probably what I'm gonna keep doing with mine. Um, after I'm done with all of that, I can add just a little bit of body motion, maybe some blinks, some eye motion, some eyebrow motion, and I have a fully like animated piece, right? So I'm probably going to spend a little bit of time here in the next couple of days um, tinkering around on that as well. Um, but that's the majority of, you know, once you have your, your shapes in there, it's just dialing them in. Now this goes with anything. We don't have to just use this on the lips. We can also use this on the character's hands. You could draw four or five very dynamic hand poses and just dial in those hand poses, right? Um, we could do it with pretty much anything. We want the ears to wiggle, we could dial some ear wiggles, right? Um, we could change the shapes of the eyebrows and dial in different eyebrow shapes, um, different eye shapes. Um, 
you want the eyelids to kind of, you want the eyes to like completely change shape, you're just putting new drawings on that same layer. So this is um, a really, a really pretty beneficial uh, way of um, kind of combining frame by frame animation with your rig. So, um, any questions on any of this? Is that a question? Um, all right, cool. Then I am going to shut up and let you work. Um, hopefully, you all have a, a big question or is there a question over there? Uh, the, the oh, sorry. Um, if you just go to file, import, there should be sound. And I believe that that will recognize MP3s and waves. Um, if not, we can. I can show you how to take a, a wave into Audition or Audacity or something like that and uh, export that out as a, a wave file or an MP3 into a wave file. But I'm pretty sure it accepts MP3s too. Has anybody tried MP3? It does accept them. Okay, yeah. So I think you'll be fine with that. So um, yeah, and you just import that. Usually, it puts it at the very top. Um, and it sets it to zero. I think you can change that if you need to. Hmm. Everybody found an audio clip you like? Anybody still looking? I stockpile these things. You say you're still looking? Or you're st How do you download them? So um, there's a couple of different websites. I, don't, I always just look for YouTube downloader um, if you're pulling it off of YouTube. Um, Robert, I think you had one you were writing. 4K video downloader? Yeah. yeah. And so that'll let you pull it down. It'll probably pull it, does it give you the option to just pull down the audio track? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you, on the top tab, you change download video, you track audio, and you can just like 3.8 backward, or 4.1K. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, so that'll work. Um, if, if for some reason you can't find one, there's actually a handful of those. Most people are using them to save videos from streaming services. In this case, we're just needing it to have some audio to work with. Um, you know, there are varying degrees of uh, legalities in those. A lot of the YouTube downloaders get taken taken down. Um, if you're trying to get it from somewhere not YouTube, if you're trying to get it from like a DVD or something like that, Netflix, um, I can show you some tricks to that. Uh, basically, the way I do it is the same way I'm recording these videos with OS or OBS. OSB is what you put down on floors before you put carpet down on top of it. Um, OBS is um, a, a video capture software. You can set that up to record your screen, um, and it's a free download. You can install it temporarily on here, and, and it'll wipe it later. So that's another way you can extract that out of other videos, YouTube or Netflix or um, uh, you know, something like that. So, all right, cool. Help. Okay. I just have to like wave mine in front of it to make it. I guess. Yes, yes, I hear that. Shush, shush. Okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, uh, you know, I'm not gonna question it. I'm just gonna leave it alone. Yeah. And I'm I, I, you know, I see that on supper alone. Occasionally, I can start to pull the computer, misses it. Um, if not, like, I'm unmuting all of this. <laughs> I don't know if we installed the drivers for this one. If 
I need to redo the audio. So import a into the I think we can a worst case scenario we could do I mean we just put a fire file and then import the image. Start frame. Take start frame down to uh, something lower. Uh, try to try to try, try to zero.
So uh, you already have this money of uh, some rents? Should be say the shorter version. I'm going to turn down my audio and keep working on this. Do not know. I have another problem. Okay. software guy. Yeah, hopefully that fixed it. Let me know if it doesn't. I have a couple of other ideas. I do not know how I would Trying to impregnate that, that raccoon from trying to impregnate that raccoon from raccoon from.
Do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate Amazon. <laughs>
would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate Pregnant. My Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. I
Pregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. From trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Oh, 
impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament.
Shape would use for like ch noise. So you could probably do, CH. Yeah, you could probably do something similar to what I have on the blue shape. What the oh. So something like that, uh -huh. except draw the key from there as well. Okay. So like then you could like, maybe you could be able to see the teeth kind of pushing forward. Like okay. Thank you. Okay.
Without a gun, I do not know how to. Without a gun. I do. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. I do not know how I... I do not know how I would stop that. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not know. Need the pool.
without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not know how. Without a Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that. I do not know. I do not know how I would stop that. I would, would, would stop that. That raccoon from trying to impregnate my winning. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. 
without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. with the Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my. I do not know how.
not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. I would have done Done. I do not know. I do not know how I would stop him from trying to track that. I do not know how I would stop that wreck. I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from from I So I, my thing is quit changing. So like when I change the mouse shape, it's not putting it as like another like a change. It's just changing like the entire bar for the rest of it. Look at that, that raccoon. For trying to impregnate my wind.
Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun... I do not know how I would would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying.
a gun. I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. We need the poo lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not... How I would stop that raccoon. Right, right. 
at that from trying to impregnate my I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon. Look at that raccoon. That's the audio one, right? Yeah. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from...
with a gun. I do not. I don't know how I would stop that raccoon. from That raccoon from trying to aim. need to fool on. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. I'm sorry, I'm trying to impregnate my. I'm 
Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, impregnate. Trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. My Winnie the Pooh. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not...
I, mean, I, I, don't, I, don't, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from. I do not I um, do not, do not. I do not know how I would start that back from trying to impregnate. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Not know how I would saw that wreck.
stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. I do not know. I do, do not know. Stop that record. 
from trying to impregnate my the poo lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, lawn ornament. Without a Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament.
without a gun, I can do Without a gun, I do not know how I would stop that raccoon from trying to impregnate my Winnie the Pooh lawn ornament. 